high in the western Himalayas, cradled in the Karakuram Mountains of northern Pakistan, lies a plateau known as the Land of Giants. The towering K2 dominates this landscape, and to the southwest of it lies the Diosai Plateau, the second highest plateau in the world. From its rugged hills, the legendary Nanga Parbat can be glimpsed in the distant southeast. This icy wilderness is covered in a blanket of snow for eight months of the year. But even in the extreme depths of winter, these plains are not barren. There is life here. There are thought to have been over 10,000 Himalayan brown bears at one time in northern Pakistan and Kashmir. Today, the species is one of the most threatened in South Asia. Their numbers across the region have declined by half in the last 100 years. They're now only found in small pockets in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China and Kazakhstan. Repeated glaciations in High Asia probably decimated a large part of the population and fragmented the rest. Over the centuries, bears have been hunted almost to extinction. They've been killed for sport and for commercial purposes, their body parts sold for use in traditional medicines. In more recent times, humans have encroached into the wild places where bears live These timid creatures avoid human settlements, and every year across the region, their numbers are declining. But in the unique haven of the Diosai Plateau, guarded by the sentinels of the Western Himalayas and the Karakuram Mountains, the bears have found a sanctuary. For four months of the year, as the strong mountain sunlight warms the earth, the rolling plains of the Diosai come to life. The summer meadows of this Himalayan eco-region are strewn with swathes of wild flowers. Over 340 species of plants are spread across these plains and hills. The bird song of more than 200 types of birds fills the air. Diosai is also home to 18 species of mammals, 
with plenty of playful golden marmots on hand to delight visitors. But there is another resident of Diosai that's the most striking of all. The Himalayan Brown Bear. The Diosai National Park was established here in 1993 to protect the brown bear's survival. These bears can be found in many areas of the world. The bears of the Diosai Plateau represent an ancient lineage from the Great Himalayan region. Hibernating in dens in the lower valleys on and off through the winter, they come up to feed on the rich grasses of the park in summer. These bears have thick coats which can be blonde to dark brown in colour, and a distinctive hump sits on its shoulders. Its slightly concave face is topped with large ears and a long snout. Its large canine teeth are capable of tearing meat, but these bears are largely vegetarian and its back teeth are better suited for eating plants. These bears are smaller than some of their genetic cousins. Even when fully grown, males only weigh around 120 to 150 kilograms and measure about one and a half to two meters in length. The Diosai bears have the lowest reproductive rates among brown bear populations anywhere in the world. At a much trimmer 60 to 70 kilograms, Female bears don't reach sexual maturity till around eight years old and usually produce just a single cub. The cub may stick to his mother for as long as five years. And while he is with her, she will not mate again. The habitat, which has very little nutritious food to offer, is partly to blame for the low reproductive rates. Only 12% of the plain is regarded as good feeding ground for the bears. Nevertheless, the bears are not picky eaters and will eat whatever is at hand. They're predominantly vegetarian, eating grasses, bulbs and roots, which they'll dig up with their long claws. Insects and fish are on the menu too. Other small mammals, such as marmots, can also prove tempting. Although with their vigilant sentries on duty, they're a lot harder to catch. The Diosai National Park is the sole habitat in the whole of South Asia that can claim an increasing population of brown bears. In 1993, though the situation was very different. In the early years, 
there were a lot of difficulties uh, in the Osai in terms of conservation. The Himalayan Wildlife Foundation recognized that the very survival of the bears in Diosai was at risk and decided to act. They gathered international funding and set up a field camp, conducting vital research on all aspects of the bears and their habitat. That summer, we went around all over the Osai. We worked really hard. We walked up and down looking for bears. We counted the bears, and all we could find were 17 bears. Compared to what we had heard from the wildlife department, there were 500. So we were really worried that maybe there were 500 bears once upon a time, and maybe this is all that is left. So we have to do um, some things. We had to dart the bears, put radio collars on them so we could do some tracking. We started collecting data, we collected blood samples. That went into genetic studies. So that was kind of a breakthrough in the information we had. Uh, out of this came out a full conservation uh, program. The Himalayan Wildlife Foundation worked with local communities to foster conservation awareness and also recruited park staff from here. Training the local people in park management gave them a vested interest in the future welfare of the park. We left in 2002 or 2003. We handed it over to the department. The basic systems were in place. There was a level of protection and the department got its uh, staff in place with its own funding. By 2007, the population of brown bears in the park had grown significantly. 43 of these fascinating creatures were now living in the Diosai Plateau. The dedicated efforts of the conservation organisations had paid off. When the Diosai National Park was created in 1993, little was known about the ecological needs of the bears. The park was divided into zones to allow for the shared use of resources between wildlife and people. The Osai mein koi core area jisko hum kehte hain wo koi 1400 1400 square kilometer ka area banta hai jisko core kehte hain. Core area wo area tha jahan pe bears ki population density jo thi wo zyada thi aur prefer karte the un areas mein rehna bears. Despite the demarcation of zones, the core areas are not always respected as being for the sole use of the wild animals. There are many pressures on the park, including the nomadic herders that arrive each summer. Gujars journey annually from the plains of the Punjab to the Diosai bringing their large herds of livestock to feed on the rich summer pastures. Their life is a hard one, of the sort typically associated with nomadic people.
पहले हम बहुत ठीक थे बड़ी अच्छी सहूलत थी हमारे चमताली के बाद अच्छे रहे हम अभी हम तंग हो गए इसलिए कि महकमा जंगलात ने जगह जगह जंगल बंद कर The herders are taking their livestock deeper into the bear's habitat every year. Inse shuru mein jab national park banne se pehle ya 50 saal ya 60 saal 70 saal pehle ki baat kare to wahan pe ek do khandan hi the jo aa rahe the dewsai mein. Unke livestock bhi kam the, unka impact park ke upar itna zyada nahi tha. और दी ईयर्स उनके खानदान की डिवीजन होती गई एक घर से अब दस घर बने हैं दस से चालीस घर बने हैं तो पार्क का एरिया तो जितना था उतना ही है इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेल्व अप्रोक्सीमेटली फोर्टीन थाउजेंड लाइफ स्टॉक ग्रेज द पास्टर्स ऑफ द डीओ साई नेशनल पार्क even more devastating for the park the shepherds cut vast amounts of shrub for fuel with dire consequences yahan ki jo bushes hain choti moti jhadiyan hain willow ki ek species selex ki yahan pe hoti hai usko kaat ke wo apna tamam utilization jo hai unka heating ka cooking wagaira ka sab kuch usi se karte hain उसका असल मसला ये है कि ये बहुत एलिवेटेड एरिया है 12-13 हज़ार फीट से ऊपर का एरिया है यहाँ पे एक सेलेक्स की स्पीशी को एक प्लांट को ग्रो करने में बहुत अरसा लगता है However, it's not just the Gujars and their livestock who have an impact on the park. In recent years, a new phenomenon is bringing unwelcome pressure on the park's resources. Commercial herders have started to run large herds of livestock through the park. As the prices of meat in the market have gone up, everybody's brother wants to take animals up to Deosai. It's not just the old gujars who used to do it for a subsistence living. It's become commercial now. More animals mean taking away the habitat from the bears. The bears are now getting pushed away into corners. as the livestock consumes the palatable plants the composition of the plant species in the park is changing non palatable plants are finding room to spread and flourish and the quality of the bear's feeding ground is deteriorating steadily In the Deosai National Park, the construction of roads and bridges is allowing for easier access across the plateau. In 2013, there were 28 human occupations in the park. 15 of these belong to the Gujars. but tourists also came up to enjoy summer in the park and set up camps here jab ye initiated hua tha construction ka kaam to us waqt humne isko rokne ki koshish ki thi ki by rules and regulations kisi bhi national park ke andar aisi koi structure permanent kisam ki na banayi jaye jisse us us ilake ki natural jo beauty hai usko disturb किया जाए या वो चेंज हो इन 
In recent years, the Gilgit Baltistan authorities have been persuaded that such development is beneficial with little regard for the needs of the wildlife and fragile ecosystem. Tourism impact पहले भी था लेकिन वो इस हद तक नहीं था अब बढ़ने की वजह ये है कि पहले यहाँ पे एक्सेसिबिलिटी इस एरिया की इतनी अच्छी नहीं थी हमारी तैयारी को इतनी कोई खास तैयारी तो नहीं है लेकिन डेफिनेटली जब टूरिज्म का फ्लो यहाँ पे बढ़ेगा तो इसका नेगेटिव इम्पेक्ट ही होगा अनटिल एंड अनलेस अगर हम उनको प्रॉपर अवेयरनेस के साथ यहाँ ना भेजें Many of the tourists coming to the park, especially from the nearby areas, have very little understanding of good environmental behavior. Honestly, I am very scared of the people of Pakistan. We are very careless about our country and our nations. If we can promote it, तो सही इंफॉर्मेशन के साथ किया जाए सही कंसिडरेशन के साथ किया जाए कि जब लोग इधर आए उनका इधर कूड़ा पेंटने का दिल ना करें इंस्टेड ऑफ एक्टिंग एज केयर टेकर्स ऑफ दिस स्टनिंग पीस ऑफ नेशनल हेरिटेज द विजिटर्स ऑफन इंफ्लिक्ट हार्म टू इट सम लाइट फायर्स इन द पार्क एंड लीव पूल्स ऑफ ट्रैश most of it being non-biodegradable. There is no system whatsoever for dealing with all this trash which they leave behind. The biggest problem that we face is lack of funds. The number of staff that we have in the park, that is very limited. Their ability to move around is very limited. But there's 2,600 square kilometers of territory in a difficult terrain. And as the number of visitors is increasing and pressures are increasing, we need more resources. The government of Gilgit Baltistan, as most of the governments, have very limited resources, whatever is left from other developmental requirements. Further shrinking the financial resources of the park is the arrangement that visitors from within the region don't need to pay to enter here. हमने कभी उनके ऊपर ज़्यादा फोकस नहीं किया है सिर्फ और सिर्फ वो टूरिस्ट जो आते हैं वो भी बहुत नॉमिनल चार्जेस उनसे जो जीबी से बाहर के जो लोग होते हैं उनसे फोर्टी रुपीस पर हेड के हिसाब से और जो फार्नर होते हैं एट डॉलर पर हेड के हिसाब से लिए जाते हैं बट इवन दीज मिनिमल चार्जेस नॉट पर टूवर्ड्स द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ द पार्क There are many settlements in the valleys below the Diosai National Park. In the villages of Karmang, Montoka, Dapa, Shilla and Sudpara, the local people live a life of extreme hardship. Investment projects from donors are extremely hard to come by in this region, and little has changed here in the last 100 years. हमारा यहाँ जो है सर्दियों में बहुत बड़ा मुश्किल है अक्टूबर में बर्फबारी शुरू हो जाती है माल मवेशी को पालना बहुत बड़ा मुश्किल है सर्दियों में यहाँ उनको चारे में जो ले जाने की तो बहुत बड़ा हुआ है उनको बर्फबारी की वजह से नहीं वहाँ नहीं पहुँचते हैं और गाज जो है हम लोग जो है तकरीबन मनों के हिसाब से बहुत बड़े बड़े टाल लगा के जमा कर लेते हैं तकरीबन हमारा इस घास को जमा करने के लिए जानवरों के घास जमा पूजी के लिए हमारे लिए कम से कम जो है ये अप्रैल मई से लेकर आगे अक्टूबर तक जो है ये जितने महीने होता है उसमें जो हमारा पूरा वक्त उसी में लग जाता है इनको घास जमा करने के लिए all the tasks that will allow the villagers to endure the extreme bitter cold of winter need to be completed. The valleys were once forested, but now the slopes are bare. 
Dung is the only source of fuel. The women spend long hours collecting and drying this. A backbreaking daily chore. The villagers rely heavily on their livestock to eke out a living. The men of the village have nowhere else to graze their livestock other than the lush meadows of the Diosai Plateau. When the park was created, they claimed traditional grazing rights, which had to be respected. In recent years, while the bear population has grown, so has the human population. And bears and livestock have started competing for grazing pastures. With each added demand on the park's resources, what's left for the bears is steadily diminishing. Although bear numbers have not fallen, they're no longer rising. It may well be that this fragile landscape has borne as much pressure as it possibly can. If it is to continue as a sanctuary and a breeding ground for these endangered bears, its precious resources will have to be more carefully protected. Deosai is the only place where there is a sustainable population of bears in the region. We need to protect it if you want to have bears in the future. The presence of humans in the bears' habitat is a reality, and local communities have to be integrated into conservation efforts. One other initiative that we'd like to see put in place is a very effective community collaboration and awareness program in which all the people of the local communities join in in the effort on the national park, see it as their asset and their future, and work with the department and people like us. This type of inclusive program is just what the Himalayan Wildlife Foundation focused on in the past. The recovery of the bear population suggests the strategy was very successful. When park rangers and staff are drawn from local communities, they take home a better understanding of the conservation issues. An awareness campaign to enlist the support of the local communities is also key. As the largest animal in the area, they are often blamed for most of the attacks on livestock. The livestock on their attacks are in some knowledge of their attacks. But the people who are wrong portraying it, that if they are dead, they die from the same way, they die from the disease, they put it on the beer. Making the local people aware of the other, more common causes of the livestock deaths can help create a more tolerant attitude to their bear neighbours. Perhaps most valuable of all is planting the seed of awareness in young minds. After all, it is in the hands of these local children that the fate of the bears will one day rest. Finding alternative sources of subsistence for the communities is also vital. Reducing their dependence on livestock will help to protect the bear's habitat. Such programs have been successful in other remote mountain communities. Fish farming was introduced in the Brogil Valley and a vaccination program in the Ayubia National Park 
With initiatives like these, the lives of the local people could be greatly improved. But much more still needs to be done in order to preserve the bear's habitat. The increasing incursions by the Gujars into additional park areas have to be addressed. We have to work hard on managing how the Gujars come in and how they grace. So we go and set up a program, talk to the Gujar families, define where they're going to graze, how they're going to graze, how much of an area they're going to use. That has to be set up. The biggest hazard they pose to the park, however, is the amount of shrub they cut. If the habitat is to be saved for the bears, cutting down the slow-growing DOSI flora at this rate cannot continue. But to enforce all these limitations will take far greater resources than the park authorities currently have. The word now is sustainable development. How do we balance a wilderness area with the need for the people to visit it? We need a institution and a capacity in that institution to manage a resource like this. Strengthening the park's revenue stream is essential and charging a small fee for all visitors could provide some of the funds the Wildlife Department desperately needs. The roads and structures that have been built are proving detrimental to the habitat and wildlife, which can thrive only where there is very little human activity. Once the precedent for building within the park is established, it's hard to stop. The needs of the park and its creatures could soon be completely overwhelmed as so-called development marches on. There's also an urgent need for environmental education for visitors to the DOSI and a stronger enforcement of park rules so that they don't damage this unique wilderness. To restore the park to its former pristine condition, a proper system of garbage disposal will need to be put in place. I would like to see the next generation have the privilege to learn from Deosai the way I learned from it. If this value is lost, something very precious will go missing from this country. As the snow begins to fall in October, the bears and the plateau will amble towards their long winter slumber. For this period, nature will be its own guardian and the land will have a reprieve under its blanket of snow. But in order to flourish, this fragile ecosystem also needs to be protected through the warm summer months. It cannot sustain the growing onslaught of human demands upon it and remain unchanged. It is time for us to take care of this land of giants, allowing it to regenerate and provide a sanctuary to some of the world's most rare and magnificent creatures. Responsibility for protecting this exceptional treasure now rests with the authorities and people of Gilgit, Baltistan. To preserve it, they will need the support of international donors and all of us who hope to safeguard Diosai 
for future generations.